good morning everyone today we are going to start with the another unit of this module that is uh, breaking system so first we will uh, see what the syllabus content of this uh, breaking system so these are the syllabus that is uh, types of break mechanical compressed air vacuum hydraulic breaking system construction and working of master cylinder break shoe arrangement disc break drum break anti lock breaking system its purpose and operation abs hydraulic unit rear wheel anti lock so these are the topics uh, are there in your syllabus so today we all we will start types of breaking system what you mean by breaking and its requirement then afterwards we will uh, directly go for the brake shoe arrangements then disc brake and uh, drum brake so which are the basic things uh, of the braking system uh, were uh, widely used uh, or you can see day to day life with this uh, disc brake and um, drum brake in our vehicles uh, then uh, afterwards we will uh, talk about mechanical braking system as well as hydraulic braking system then till here today we'll uh, complete the portion next class we will go for a uh, master and wheel cylinder arrangement and other system of the braking unit or braking system so this many things are the planned for this uh, unit so we will move forward for the topics so whenever you talk about break what actually it means uh, the braking means uh, we want to stop the vehicle or you want to slow down the vehicle depending upon the road condition or uh, one more type of braking will be there along with the normal braking that is the parking braking that is whenever you want to park uh, your vehicles uh, so that vehicle should not move so parking brakes are provided for uh, safety purpose of the vehicle and whenever you park the brake in the slope also the vehicle should not move so parking brakes uh, should be provided as a, a compensatory brake braking unit along with the normal braking unit so normal braking means we want to stop the vehicle or we want to slow down the speed of the vehicle depending upon your requirement condition so how exactly we are going to do this one so whatever the kinetic energy available in the vehicle that has to be converted into heat energy so that means so the energy one form of energy it will gets converted into another form that is kinetic energy will gets converted into heat energy or we will liberate it as a heat so this is how the braking system will works so exactly same can happen during the reverse manner it can happen during the accelerating of the vehicle that means whenever the speed we wanted a heat may be converted into kinetic energy so this is how your braking system will occurs that is we want to stop that kinetic energy so for that reason one energy it has to be converted into another kind so kinetic energy of the vehicle it can be converted into heat form so to bring or uh, to slow down the vehicle or to bring the stopping of the vehicle so this is how the braking system will uh, work so whenever uh, your vehicle produces this torque so what will happen it will uh, produces the torque so this uh, torque will have a positive torque means engine will always produces the positive torque so that uh, it will moves the uh, vehicle but uh, your braking will produces the negative torque or uh, that means uh, negative tractive effort so that we have to reduce the force or uh, means uh, movement of the force of the vehicle and bring back to the lower speed or you want to, to stop the vehicle so this is how your braking system will works so also whenever the braking uh, system is provided uh, since heat will be dissipated there should be proper uh, 
cooling should be there or else sometimes while you are going down you will be continuously pressing the brake so so much of heat might be generated so we have to take that heat so cooling should be there otherwise uh, it will uh, cost uh, material damage or might be braking system may failure for the further operations and so sufficient or efficient uh, cooling should be there in the braking system so for this uh, what are the requirements should be there so whatever we told now so there should be some kind of functional element should be there for uh, meeting this requirement of the braking system so first one is the irrespective of your vehicle speed or load condition or type of load whatever might be the main function or main essential required is to produce the maximum retarding force and deceleration that means so we have to give the maximum retarding force to bring down the engine speed or speed of the vehicle to the lowest position or you want to stop means to zero position so maximum possible retarding force should be required to meet the braking system requirement so second one will be the irrespective of road condition or load condition pedal effort required should be same so whatever condition may you encounter while driving the vehicle so whatever you are pressing pedal so in the brake pedal you are pressing your foot so that effort should be same for irrespective of the condition and loading unit of the vehicle so that should be same and response time this is very important so whenever you press the brake pedal so it has to take minimum time to reach uh, to stop of the vehicle or might be whatever the speed lower speed you want it so the response time should be as less as possible or should be minimum that means uh, to bring from uh, higher speed to lower speed how much time it will take that is called as response time so that time should be as less as possible or should be minimum that's it so next uh, brake should have a good uh, anti fade characteristics means that should be resist to friction because so, so many material friction will be there so brake shoe will comes contact with the or brake drum uh, means uh, or in the disc we have the rotors plates will be there so friction will be come into picture so that should resist that uh, friction so it should give longer uh, life of the system so brake effective should not decrease due to prolonged application that means uh, whenever you are moving down you are applying continuously brake so during that time the brake effective should not decrease means uh, for if you longly press the brake pedal it should not uh, deteriorate the braking effect so for this uh, efficient cooling of the brake system is uh, needed next uh, in emergency brake must be strong enough to stop the vehicle or uh, in the main time driver must have proper control over the vehicle that means uh, sudden uh, some disturbance comes uh, while driving the vehicle so the brake whatever you are applying to the vehicle should stop the vehicle immediately so that should be minimum damage for the opposite vehicle or uh, for the system so answer it should have a strong enough to stop the vehicle it should not skid also the brake should not be affected by the water dust road grit because uh, uh, in the ground uh, in a winter uh, in a uh, rainy season so much of mud will be there uh, water will be there on the road so it should not slip so braking should be as uh, good enough to resist all those things next to braking should be as light as uh, possible and it should be easy to maintain and it should give a long life next to braking system should uh, produce uh, less noise and uh, vibration next uh, system should uh, facilitate uh, use of independent secondary brake that means uh, parking brake should be there along with the normal brake so parking brake uh, whenever you switch off the engine when your braking system may not work properly so hence uh, there should be another way of braking when uh, when you replace the car uh, in a rest position 
these are the breaking uh, requirements uh, for the breaking system next we will go for uh, types of break so types of break it will be classified by considering the several factors first one is uh, uh, primary and uh, secondary brakes so primary brakes means uh, as usual normal brakes uh, whenever it's vehicle is uh, moving so we want it to bring into the stop condition or uh, might be uh, uh, lesser speed with the minimum possible distance uh, so that uh, type of brakes are known as primary brakes and secondary brake is nothing but your uh, parking brakes uh, which will be old to use so because on a slope or whenever the vehicle is in a stationary condition to hold the vehicle so parking brakes are uh, used and the second type of uh, brake is the transmission brake uh, and the wheel brakes uh, transmission brakes means uh, uh, the location it will uh, either at the transmission or near to the wheels uh, in transmission brake what will happen heat dissipation rate will be very poor and uh, it consists to only one brake drum so in this type uh, braking torque has to be transmitted through universal joints propeller shaft differential and uh, rear axle so it is actually provided at the rear axle and uh, this uh, needs uh, care while designing these components uh, uh, also size has to be increased proportionally and uh, differential distribute the uh, brake torque equally between these uh, two wheels uh, this brake transmission brake especially transmission brakes are uh, stronger than that of uh, wheel brakes so uh, wheel brakes means in which wheel we will have one brake drum in transmission only one drum will be there from the one drum it will goes to the wheels uh, but uh, in wheel brakes means uh, we will have uh, each wheel will have uh, one one uh, drum so this uh, will increases the area or might be the efficient of the braking will uh, increases so the area for uh, heat dissipation also increases and uh, efficient cooling can be done on this type of uh, brake uh, also these brakes are exposed to the atmosphere and so cooling uh, effect will be more because atmospheric cooling rate will be more and so convection heat transfer into come into picture and hence so cooling will be more all automobiles uh, automobiles are usually provided with the wheel brakes uh, next type of braking is a drum brake uh, and disc brake uh, this will will study in deeply so drum brakes uh, uh, are like we will provide one uh, drum so in that piston and cylinder arrangement will be there so that will uh, provide the resistance for the motion of the vehicle or wheel in the opposite directions and so uh, braking can be done in the disc brake we will have the rotors so rotor uh, again that piston and arrangement uh, that will push us the brake pads and uh, it will bring into the rest so disc brake so these are the types of uh, drum brakes and uh, disc brakes this is actually based on your construction these are classified drum brakes and disc brakes next uh, we will have depending upon the actuation method of brakes uh, we will have the mechanical hydraulic electrical vacuum and airbags uh, so these are uh, depends upon a method of actuating the brake shoes uh, these brakes are classified into mechanical hydraulic electric vacuum and uh, air brakes next we will go for the brake shoe arrangements brake shoe arrangements so drum brakes uh, essentially it consists of uh, one brake shoe and uh, arrangement of brake shoe will be very important because uh, that brake shoe will come into contact with your uh, uh, brake drum and uh, through and to the wheels and so uh, it has to resist our wheel up and it has to resist to the uh, opposite force for the whatever uh, in which direction wheel is rotating so opposite to that of uh, it has to produce the force and it will come into contact with that one and so uh, the arrangement of the shoe will be very important so relative brake 
king of this stork acting again acting at the break shoe for the same force applied by the pedal depends upon whether uh, expander which force of the break shoe is fixed to the back plate or keep floating whether anchor is fixed or floating whether the brake shoe or leading or trailing means whether whether uh, you are keeping this condition how your braking system will work so, so we have several types of arrangement of this uh, brake shoe depending upon the brake shoe arrangement how your braking system will works so in that first type will be your fixed expander type so if you keep the expander in a fixed position so how your braking arrangement will works so we will directly we will go to the diagram then we will explain so this is uh, your uh, fixed type of uh, expander type fixed expander type so it consist of uh, one uh, brake drum so brake drum after that uh, we have the brake plate brake plate will be there in the brake plate all assembly will be there so in the brake plate uh, we have the expander where you are going to apply the force through the brake pedal then we have the brake shoe a and brake shoe b in that uh, brake shoe out of periphery of the brake shoe we will have the brake lining so this brake lining will comes into contact with the wheel up so brake will be provided to the wheels then we will have the adjuster and anchors so your uh, brake drum will be rotating in this direction so what will happen sir in this uh, brake shoe this is called as a leading shoe and brake shoe b it is called as trailing shoe what you mean by leading shoe leading shoe means uh, even when there is a no braking force remember even then when there is no braking force the shoe will tend to drag along the brake drum so that means along this direction this shoe also will tend to uh, along with this uh, brake drum so trailing shoe means what trailing shoe means it will drag opposite to the direction of your uh, rotation of brake drum so it will always tends to opposite to the direction of whatever the brake drum rotates so there will be any one uh, balancing of the force will be there between the leading shoe and the trailing shoe so this will results in unequal braking effect remember so because of unequal uh, 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 way of uh, force is exerted by the brake shoe what will happen there will be unequal brake effect braking effect between the shoe too so the trailing shoe has a better anti fade characteristics than the leading shoe so what will happen at higher temperature due to increased braking effect with the prolonged application of brake the friction coefficient decreases in case of uh, your leading screw shoe than that of, uh, than that of your trailing shoe so because of uh, trailing shoe is uh, running in opposite direction so this shoe will have the lesser leading shoe will uh, have the lesser uh, friction of uh, coefficient whenever we apply the more time for the braking unit and so this won't be effective way of arrangement whenever uh, there will be prolonged brakes happening so this shoe will have a anti lesser anti fade characteristics uh, whenever uh, prolonged brakes are uh, happening so this is how we were fixed the expander type of uh, braking will uh, occur so next type will be your uh, floating so now if you keep this expander in a floating type uh, what will happen now it is fixed to the your uh, back uh, back plate now if you keep that uh, expander in a uh, floating type what will happen uh, then uh, this uh, two shoes also will become a uh, uh, leading shoe leading shoe so there won't be any trailing shoe so that that means uh, the force uh, 
there will be equal force between these two shoes and uh, floating expander will have the more uh, effective whenever the prolonged braking will be applied by the driver so whenever the prolonged braking is applied then floating expander will give the more uh, more efficient way of braking when you consider prolonged braking so because of equal distribution of force on the both the shoes this is how you are floating uh, expander type. so this is about a floating expander type so in this type uh, expander you need to kept uh, floating so expander you need whatever you told so that will be not fixed that will be floating so hence uh, breaking effect uh, of two shoes uh, will be equal because so two if, uh, shoes will act like a leading shoes so as there won't be any disturbance uh, between the two shoes so two shoes will get equal forces and so uh, equal breaking effect will be there on the two shoes and so it will be very effective and never never say prolonged breaking will be there next type will be floating so in the floating anchor type uh, so same component brake drum will be there brake plate will be there expander will be there brake shoe primary shoe will be there secondary shoe will be there and here the floating anchor here floating anchor will be there so so these two brake shoes are connected together this by floating anchor so what will happen these two shoes have a common anchor fixed which is uh, fixed to the back plate that means uh, both the shoes will have the leading shoes again so in this way we can make the both the shoes in the leading uh, shoes and uh, the braking effect will be very much efficient so this is how you are floating anchor type of uh, braking shoe arrangement next we will have the two leading uh, shoe type and two trailing shoe type so two leading shoe type means uh, when anchor is kept floating remember when uh, anchor is kept floating both the shoes tend to lean type okay so it has a high degree of self energization and so it will increases the braking torque the lining wear whatever the braking uh, lining will be there on these shoes also uniform and uh, these brakes are very sensitive to the frictional changes and uh, and so it not it will not be suited for uh, whenever uh, uh, prolonged application of the brake will be there so two leading shoe type uh, may not be applicable whenever there is a prolonged application of braking will be there also this uh, both shoes act as a trailing shoes whenever vehicle is in a reverse gear so when the reverse gear is applied so this uh, means the direction will be reverse and uh, this uh, shoe may not be uh, act as a leading shoe this may act as a trailing shoe and so uh, braking effect will be reduced so this makes uh, have a better fading characteristics but uh, to make a reverse uh, gear suitable so next case what this is what i told two leading shoes now next to to make the reverse gear is uh, uh, during reverse gear braking should be effective so for that reason we are making two trailing shoe that means uh, again in the floating anchor type if you make uh, two uh, the brake shoe if you are making that uh, two brake braking shoe if we are trailing shoes then in the reverse manner it will act as a leading shoe and so uh, we will get the braking uh, very much efficient whenever the two trailing shoe type of braking are used so this is the different types of uh, braking shoes arrangement totally five types one is the fixed expander type second one is the floating expander type third one is the floating anchor type and uh, fourth one is the two leading shoe type and fifth one is the two trailing shoe type so this is the brake shoe arrangement given in the brake uh, braking system 
So next we will move on to the drum brakes, very important. Drum brakes. So these are the brakes uh, most commonly used uh, in the vehicles. Uh, so you may heard about this uh, drum brakes. Uh, so which will be actuated by the mechanical means uh, like uh, cam and uh, uh, toggle lever will be there whenever the brake pedal is applied. So toggle lever uh, will uh, comes in contact with the cam and the cam will operate it and it will apply the force on your brake shoes over here. So force will be applied by the cam and toggle lever mechanism on the brake drum. So the rods and lever uh, whatever your linkages will be there from the brake pedal to tail over here. So this will uh, whatever the linkages we are using that will uh, reduce us the effort uh, put by the driver on the brake pedal. So that will be the advantage. So this consists of one brake drum. So as usual whatever explained in the previous slide same kind of thing brake drum will be there. So which is uh, fixed to the uh, wheel up. So brake drum will be fixed to the wheel up. The raw uh, then uh, back plate is mounted on your uh, brake drum uh, which will be nearer to your uh, rear axle casing. On the front axle this uh, back plate will be connected to the or fixed to the steering knuckle bolts. The expander might be used or uh, cam and trigger, uh, uh, trigger kind of a mechanism can be used. So depending upon the types uh, or requirement. Next anchor will be there. So in that adjuster will be there. So which are all supported by the back plate. So, so this back plate will be made from the pressed steel sheet. So which will protect from the this whole assembly will be protected from the mud and the dust. So since uh, this will uh, absorb so all the torque reaction of the shoes it is also called as torque plate. So this back plate whatever you are calling. So this will absorb uh, all the torques of the shoes whatever the shoes provided by uh, torque provided by the shoes it will absorb all that torque and so this is also called it as back plate is also called it as torque plate. So two brake shoes uh, which will be in a semicircular uh, shapes semicircular shape and uh, are anchored on the back plate uh, and uh, brake lining or uh, frictional lining will be provided at the back side of your or uh, periphery outer periphery of your brake shoes uh, which makes uh, contact with the drum which makes contact with the drum. So the brake shoe will rub against the wheel rim through frictional lining. So your frictional lining will be there. So that will rub against your uh, uh, rim of the wheel. Uh, one or two reactor spring will be provided so that uh, brake should be always uh, uh, kept away from the drum whenever in the normal running condition. That means whenever you are not pressing the pedal it should uh, away from this uh, brake drum and so these two springs are uh, provided. Okay, So this is the uh, construction part of your uh, drum brake. So whenever this expander is operated or whenever you are press the brake pedal so force will be exerted by the uh, expander or through the cam uh, toggle lever to brake shoe. So what will happen? Uh, it will uh, force this uh, brake shoe to rub against the uh, rub against uh, your wheel rim. So what will happen our wheel drum from the inside thereby we are applying the force or uh, in the opposite direction of rotation of wheel. Hence braking can be applied. So and uh, here adjuster is provided which will adjust whenever this uh, brake uh, lining will be there. No, this brake lining or a friction lining after a more usage it will uh, have the lesser uh, diameter and so adjuster is provided so that uh, it will adjust the length and uh, braking effect uh, you can uh, will be 
optimized and so your uh, this uh, drum brakes operates in the braking system so this is how braking will be occurred so whenever the force is applied by the brake pedal this force will exert the force on your brake shoe so brake shoe consists of your brake lining which is uh, faced adhesive using adhesive it is pasted on your uh, brake shoe so this uh, brake lining will comes in contact with the wheel rim or uh, wheel drum so that uh, it will uh, exert the force in the opposite direction of rotation of the wheel and its braking of the system is uh, apart so this is how your braking will works adjuster is provided after uh, so much of use of uh, means after usage uh, there will be wear in the frictional lining material so to overcome this uh, gap adjuster is uh, used so that uh, your braking system will works efficiently so this is how your uh, drum brakes are operated so these springs are uh, kept because to keep away from this uh, brake shoe from the brake drum so that uh, while in normal running condition whenever the brake pedal is not apply the force during that condition to keep away these springs are yours so this is how your drum brakes works next we will go to the disc brake so in the disc brake so this is the full explanation part of the brake drum so disc brake so in the disc brake what is happen there is a lot of difference in the disc brake to drum brake so in the brake drum is replaced with the circular plate over here we can see circular plate revolving disc is will replace or uh, circular plate will replace as your uh, drum so this uh, circular plate uh, which will be revolve at the speed of your whatever the wheel will be there so that speed it will revolve so here we will have the piston so this is called as piston a piston so two side we have the piston and we will have the frictional pad frictional pad will be there then we will have the caliper so in this uh, you may have the oil over there so how it will exactly works so caliper is a stationary element remember caliper is the stationary element and revolving this it will revolve around the wheel speed so whatever the wheel speed is that at that uh, speed your uh, uh, revolving disc will uh, rotate so the caliper is a stationary element and uh, it uh, it is fixed to the your uh, rear axle casing or uh, stub axle so uh, wherever uh, either in the axle it is uh, placed uh, next how it will work whenever the brake is applied what will happen whenever the brake is applied the hydraulic pressure hydraulic pressure so that is the oil carries the pressure so that pressure will push us your piston means pressure force will exerted by your piston so this friction will push us your frictional pad and frictional pad will comes in contact with the revolving disc and so there will be friction created it will be generated so your braking element will be done so you are uh, whatever the speed you require if the more force is you have put uh, on the pedal more force will be exerted and it will bring back to the resting condition or speed might be lowered and so your braking uh, will be done by this uh, system so this is how your uh, disc brake will uh, uh, works so disc brakes uh, will have the uh, efficient cooling characteristics as well as uh, it is high resistance to the brake fail that means uh, the material uh, due to friction uh, uh, material loss will be very less and uh, life of this uh, disc brake is uh, more than that of a drum brake so on the releasing of the brakes what will happen pressure will be comes to the normal so this will move towards this side and it will revolve whatever the speed at which speed of whatever the wheel rotates that speed it will revolve so this is how your uh, uh, disc brake will uh, op uh, occurs 
So, uh, in the disc brake, uh, we will require some uh, higher operating force than that of a drum brake. Uh, so, for that reason, one more than one cap caliper, one more than one caliper uh, may be used to reduce the cooling rate. So, in the disc brake, also we have two types. One is a swinging caliper type. One more is the sliding caliper. So types of uh, disc brakes, uh, swinging caliper type, on more is the sliding caliper type. So in a swinging caliper type, uh, see over here, we will have the only uh, disc brake and only one piston on one side. Okay, so only one piston will be there on one side and frictional pad will be there on the two side also. This side frictional pad is fixed to the caliper so so one side frictional pad it is fixed to the caliper other side frictional pad it is connected to your piston understood so this is how you are uh, on a, a swinging caliper type uh, construction will be there so whenever the brake is applied high pressure fluid high pressure fluid presses the piston and pressures your frictional pad against the revolving disc and caliper so entire caliper is there no so entire caliper exerts a reaction from opposite side so whenever the applied force will be there so exerts the pressure from the opposite side hence so this pad will move and against your disc so this will move slightly inwards because of uh, entire pressure is exerted on the caliper so this friction pad will move slightly on the right hand side and so this pad will also come in so contact with the disc and so your braking system will be applied so this is called a swinging type caliper type of uh, caliper type of braking system so since uh, caliper automatically changes its position by swinging about a fulcrum so thus the name is called as swinging caliper type of a uh, disc brake next we will have the sliding type so we will go through the sliding type of uh, caliper type of disc brake so in sliding caliper type of disc brake what will happen sir? again we will have the two pistons piston one piston two remember this is piston one this is piston two then we have the frictional pad so this is the frictional pad a this one is the frictional pad B. So frictional pad is connected to the caliper. So this is your disc. So frictional uh, pad A is connected to your caliper. Friction B is can connected to this piston. Okay. So what will happen, sir? Whenever the brake is applied, what will happen, sir? High pressure fluid directly exerts the pressure on the this piston from this piston to the frictional pad B okay so friction pad b will comes in contact with your disc what about uh, this friction pad so whenever high pressure is fluid this will also push us this piston remember this piston p2 so which will causes the pressure on the entire caliper so what will happen it will push us this side that means uh, it will move towards the right so Whenever it is moving slightly towards the right, this frictional pad will comes in contact with this uh, disc. So this is how your sliding caliper works. Because of sliding motion of your uh, caliper, this name has come. That is sliding caliper type. Because your high pressure fluid, it will uh, pushes the this piston and it will slides your entire caliper towards the right. So this friction pad will comes in the contact with your disc and the name is called as sliding caliper type of uh, bricks disc bricks so this is how exactly your uh, disc bricks are uh, working in condition got it so now we will see the difference between a disc and a drum brake so what are the differences uh, disc brake uh, since your area is more so more efficient cooling will be possible in the disc brake and uh, in the drum brake uh, area exposed will be less and uh, 
uh, it dissipation is more and less efficient cooling will be there in the drum brake and uh, in the disc brake uh, as a flat friction fats are used because a rotor type of uh, disc we are using so where on the frictional surface will be uniform here we are having the semicircular type of frictional linings on the brake shoes hence uh, there will be non uniform of uh, friction uh, wear of your surfaces uh, sometimes some surfaces uh, uh, you may get a more uh, uh, where in the surface of your linings uh, or shoes will be there so in sunny one uh, surface of air where will be there this uh, kind of a braking system the weight is less resulting in lower inertia compared to this uh, the drum brake will have a higher weight and uh, this kind of brakes are more stable compared to this this is less stable maintenance and the service will be very easy over here only rotor disc will be there and uh, piston and cylinder arrangement, piston arrangement, fire arrangement whereas over here uh, so many things will be there service if you want to do the servicing first you have to remove the drum brake drum then which uh, take more time always and then we have to replace the brake linings uh, and uh, again you have to that uh, rivet it or fix it to the brake shoes uh, using some adhesive so so much of work will be the service uh, is more and complicated compared to this uh, service and they are having better anti-fit characteristics uh, that is uh, frictional will be coefficient is so very high and uh, material resistance will be high so here uh, braking effect uh, decreases uh, with the constant and prolonged application of brakes they do not have a self servo action hence require creating operating pressure for disc brakes since uh, brakes show experience self-organization uh, energization and decreases the brake uh, uh, uh decreases the brake force required to the pedal the total friction area available is less total friction available is more for drum so these are the difference between a disc and a drum brakes now next we will go for the mechanical type of uh, braking systems mechanical brakes so, so in this uh, we have the cam operated uh, uh, or uh, cable or shaft operated system first one in this uh, we will directly we will go to the cam operated uh, uh, braking actually whenever you talk about uh, mechanical brakes uh, it is mainly how you will operate that brake shoe so depending upon that uh, operation of the brake shoe we will have the different types of uh, mechanical brakes uh, first one is a cam operated uh, mechanical brakes uh, and second one is your uh, uh, gearing type of uh, mechanical brakes next we will have the both uh, uh, gearing type for uh, uh, reverse manner also how you can use so first diagram that will represent the, the cam operated cam operated mechanical type so in this uh, you can see brake shoe brake lining brake drum all those things will be there how we are going to force using the cam and toggle lever mechanism so whenever you apply the force this force will operate this cam and this cam will force this brake shoe hence the brake lining will come into contact with the wheel uh, rim so and the braking is applied so which will against the rotation of your wheel so in this way your mechanical braking will be there that is you are using the cam operator so you have to draw this diagram toggle and cam uh, mechanism so then you have to explain next one is the girling mechanism so in the girling mechanism uh, of a braking system uh, when the brakes are applied so what will happen uh, force will be ex uh, coming to the expander so this uh, expander will uh, uh, it will come in contact with the brake shoe as well as it will come into contact with the bell crank lever mechanism so crank of your bell mechanism it will come in contact with this one and this will come in contact with the adjuster so what will happen whenever it is uh, connected to the adjuster so adjuster will give the reaction makes the whole brake shoe assembly at the lower end at the lower end to move towards the right so that means all the uh, two brake shoe will be having the leading shoe 
so once it is uh, shoe will be made into leading type uh, so equal kind of uh, force uh, will be there on the two shoes and so your braking mechanism will be applied so so main drawback of the system is uh, when uh, automobile is moving the reverse gear so both moving uh, shoe will become a trailing shoe so net braking effect will be less whenever you are operating in the reverse gear so for that reason we have a advanced kind of uh, grilling mechanism so what will happen instead of putting uh, only one side a bell crank lever mechanism another side also they are put so whenever it is operated in a reverse manner so this will in come into contact with the picture and it will acts in a reverse way so once uh, it is uh, done in a reverse way so both the shoe will become your uh, leading shoe so hence uh, there won't be a much loss in the braking effect when the reverse gear is uh, applied so this is how your uh, mechanical type of uh, arrangement will be there to apply the force so two types so one is the cam operated type and uh, next one is the grilling mechanical brake type so in the grilling mechanical type this is for forward direction this is for your reverse direction so how it will be there so explain next uh, today's class final thing is a uh, hydraulic so in the hydraulic brakes uh, this is a common thing uh, you are uh, heard about a master cylinder mechanism so we will have the master cylinder which is filled with the uh, oil so which is pressurized oil and incompressible fluid that means the density won't change uh, of this uh, fluid and uh, from this uh, cylinder it is connected to the each wheel by piping connection steel piping connection so each wheel will have the uh, drums so brake drums will be there to the e cylinder or disc will be there so from the master cylinder we are giving the pressurized uh, fluid to the each cylinder or each drum for the each wheel this will be the rear end this will be the front end you may have front disc rear drum or you may have four side also if you may have disc brakes so depending upon type you required you will have the type of braking system so how it will work so it will uh, um, works on the basis of uh, pascal law since we are using the incompressible fluid it exerts uh, it exerts equal force on uh, all direction whenever the brake pedal is pressed what will happen it will uh, pressurize this uh, uh, fluid by the piston movement so this pressurized fluid will uh, give the equal pressure in all directions so we will get the equal amount of force for the all the four wheels so this is how your master cylinder wheel works so this is the mechanism given for the hydraulic brake so either you may use a disc brake or drum brake depending upon your requirement so this is how your hydraulic brake works so this will uh, uh, give the pressures in all direction so what is the pascal law basically pascal law what is states when the pressure is exerted on a confined fluid it transmit uh, it transfer uh, transmit the pressure without any loss equally in uh, all direction this is how pascal's law states so if you pressurize over here the same amount of pressure will be there for the four wheels so this is how your hydraulic brakes are working so movement of the piston in the master cylinder uh, will be given by the your brake pedal force so this is uh, the actually working of your uh, hydraulic brakes uh, in the initially if we are making the small pressure will be always there that is 50 kilopascal always maintained in this uh, steel pipe because uh, to keep uh, wheel uh, wheel piston in the expanded position otherwise uh, you may have compressed portion there more, may not be any movement over here less movement might be there when are you applying the pressure so for that reason small pressure always kept uh, 
in the cylinder or in the fluid in the steel piping that is around 50 kilopascal it is uh, there so that it will be always in the expandable position okay uh, and also this uh, pressure is kept because uh, to avoid the entry of uh, air into the wheel cylinder whenever the brake is uh, released so whenever you after pressing the brake so it will come back to the normal pressure so it has to come back to the normal pressure so if you are not keeping the higher pressure that means air may enter into this uh, system so that will uh, damage your braking system hence uh, to avoid that also we are keeping the slightly higher pressure that is a uh, 50 kilo pascal pressure inside this uh, tube so this is how your hydraulic brake works so this will complete uh, your uh, today's class so next class we will uh, go for master cylinder working construction all those things and other type of uh, braking uh, systems